This is Deepcool's first ever mouse, the MC310, and damn, we gotta talk about this. The funny thing is that we have been testing our view unit for a month now, and I had no idea that it was such a secret product. When I went online to the Deepcool site a couple of weeks ago, I couldn't even find a section about the mouse. It was as though it never existed. I was so bothered by this that I took a look at the box over and over just to make sure I wasn't misreading the manufacturer's name. Lo and behold though, just a couple of days ago, Deepcool updated their site with their flagship mouse. However, even with that update, it's still pretty hidden unless you know where to look. I'm Rafael from Hardware Sugar, the only PC shop in the Philippines with no BS warranty and this is our review of Deepcool's beginning in the world of gaming mice. Let me begin with cost. At 1,500 pesos, the MC310 is a lot cheaper than the similar looking Glorious Mice and the Steel Series Aerox by 1,200 and a whopping 2,100 pesos respectively. However, even at this price point, there are a lot of similar looking honeycomb mice to choose from, ranging from Techware, Red Dragon, and your choice, just to name a few. What the prices do not, however, reflect is the history of Deepcool being a company which is known for making quality PC products for years. And we say this with personal experience because we sell their products to our customers. Whether it is their air coolers, AIOs, cases, or power supply units, we rarely have negative feedback from customers regarding Deepcool's products. The dependability of Deepcool as a manufacturer and the entry level price, in my opinion, makes the MC310 worth considering if you are in the market for a light yet budget gaming mouse. Let's get straight to it. Does it game well? Yes. Gaming with the MC310 is a lot of fun. I never felt that the mouse caused discomfort during marathon gaming sessions or long hours of video editing. And as I have said in almost every review, manufacturers should always make sure that there are at least two buttons available in order to change your mouse sensitivity on the fly. That way you can lower and increase sensitivity at any point rather than go through the whole cycle of sensitivity options. In terms of design, the MC310 does not innovate far from the tried and tested honeycomb mouse concept people are already familiar with. Even the way the holes are laid out are like most of its more expensive and cheaper cousins. I haven't used a honeycomb mouse before, so I'll be reviewing the MC310 through fresh eyes. However, I will say that I much prefer this design over most of the others because there is hardly any branding on the mouse, thus the minimalist aesthetic. From afar, the MC310 looks like it's hovering above the desk because of the way the LED strip seems to hide the bottom part of the mouse altogether. It comes in only a single color, which is this stealthy matted black plastic finish. I've reviewed a lot of mice these past few months, and this finish is really my favorite. The color and feel reminds me of the phantom black of the S21 Ultra, to which Samsung spent two minutes and a half promoting. Yes, that's a long time to talk about the color black. It isn't just the color though, but also the feel of the matted finish which makes the MC310 a pleasure to hold. In short, it feels more luxurious than it costs. There are no rubber grips here which might be a turn off to some people who like feeling that familiar anti-sweat security. However, it was a good call aesthetically because it makes the mouse clean and mature, unlike the Asus M3 mouse which, while a good budget mouse overall, looked tacky. The signature aqua color of Deep Cool at the bottom adds enough vibrance to the overall design without calling too much attention to itself. The most important feature which even ROG is guilty of choosing to leave out are two buttons below the scroll wheel which allow you to change your sensitivity in both directions. I have complained heavily in the past about mice that only choose to place one button here thus forcing you to change sensitivity in only one direction. The more expensive Glorious Model O and the Steel Series Aerox suffer from this problem and that alone would keep me from buying these mice over the MC310. It is extremely helpful in FPS when you want to switch from sniper to assault or vice versa on the fly. It's also handy for office tasks if you have several monitors because it can take some time to get to the other side if you don't increase the DPI. Even if you aren't gonna use the second button for lower sensitivity, more buttons on a mouse is always better because it makes the user more functional. And there is nothing ugly about the two button placement at all. This is unlike my Corsair Iron Claw, which while has many buttons, looks like a confused mess of a tank. I have big hands, and I'm right-handed, but the MC310 fits pretty well. It is definitely a little smaller than what I'm used to, but I have gamed with this for many hours and had no cramps or at any way felt that my pinky was not being supported. 
a problem I had with the more expensive and decorated Corsair Harpoon. The MC310 is ambidextrous, so you should be pretty happy regardless if you are left or right-handed. The honeycomb design isn't just meant to make it look cool through the spillage of colors coming from the RGB, but it is also meant to provide cooling. The gaps are natural air pockets so that a good portion of your hand isn't actually touching the mouse itself. Of course, I imagine that this kind of design will bring in a lot of dust over time, and I don't think the back is removable for you to clean the insides. Weighing in at 75 grams, the MC310 is a light mouse compared to that of the ROG Wired Carries which clocks in at 62 grams. You're getting more functionality however with the MC310 through its two buttons on top while having comparable weight to that of a known premium mouse brand. ROG. Can one really feel the difference of 75 versus 62 grams? Probably. But it isn't a difference which would get me to buy the mouse over the other. I would still prefer comfort and functionality over weight. The lighting of the MC310 is composed of the scroll wheel, four strobing LED bulbs within the mouse itself, the deep cool logo next to them, and the immersive LED strip which hugs the body of the mouse. I dig the lighting very much, which surprised me because I thought the blinding bulb flashes would be annoying. The fact that the branding is buried underneath means when you hold the mouse in your hands or when you look at it at first glance, you get to enjoy it for what it is, a premium looking mouse without a reminder to buy more products from the manufacturer. Now let's talk bad stuff. The software to control the macros and RGB of the MC310 reflect how new Deepcool is to gaming mice and I'm surprised at the sloppiness of the execution of everything about the software process. Even getting the software, to be honest, is pretty sketchy. By the time of this video, Deepcool has still pretty much buried the existence of the MC310 in its own website. There is no mention that they sell mice. Instead, you need to go to Accessories and then select New. From New, scroll down to select the MC310 and then select Download. The irritating part is that the download doesn't give you the software, but just a picture of where to actually download the software. What's even more irritating is that you can't copy and paste the URL from the picture they sent. Instead, you need to manually encode it into your browser. You know you've encoded the URL incorrectly if it gives you an error code in Chinese. And when you finally do type in the correct file, there is no official web page to tell you've successfully done so. Instead, your browser just begins downloading some file which in this day and age of online security is pretty sketchy. The software itself is just called MC310, meaning this software is meant to control just one piece of hardware. We live in the day and age of Razer Synapse, Corsair IQ, Asus Aura Sync, and so forth, which is a single software which controls the RGB of dozens and dozens of other hardware. But the fact that Deepcool has branded the software the same name as the mouse itself hints that these are still the early days because I can't see a peripheral in today's market surviving by itself without the attempt to match up with other hardware. Lastly, the software for RGB is puzzlingly slow. Changing an RGB theme takes around five seconds for the effect to occur. This is bizarre because even wireless mice nowadays change instantaneously the moment you select them on their software. The MC310 isn't even wireless. It's wired straight into my computer and so there is no excuse for this kind of input lag. Customization for the RGB is also restrictive. You are forced into only 12 choices. This is tragic considering how many lights you could theoretically play around with. I want to however highlight that there is no input lag whatsoever when it comes to presses, changing sensitivity, and overall usage for intense gaming. It's just the RGB, which in my opinion is probably a software issue and not a hardware issue. Thus, I'm hoping Deepcool can patch this up soon. In conclusion, I highly recommend the MC310 because it is a minimalist mouse which is comfortable to hold, isn't expensive, and in some regards, even a step up from its more expensive competitors. Personally, if this were wireless, I would probably own one because of how premium it feels without the annoyance of a brand staring in my face. Yes, the software experience is much to be desired. However, I am the type of user who plays around with the RGB of a product for a while and then just selects one profile without changing it for months on end. What is more important for me is that there is no input lag, it is ergonomic, and that there are enough buttons to make me productive. Let us know in the comment section below if there are other similar looking mice we missed out on and your feelings on Deepcool entering the mouse business. We want to give an extremely special thanks to our top fans who helped make all of our work possible. ITX Addict, Rafael James, Ian Meru, Liam Magnae, Richard Onkinko, John Ruben Ochia, and Christian Espinosa. 
It's good seeing all of you so regularly during our streams. And again, thank you so much for the support.